I gotta go. Well, I ask a lot of people when um, they go purchase cars, well, what's your engine room like? And they don't the know. Biggest answer and the most answer I get is, I don't know. And that's horrible to not know right. what you have right. to pay back for this car because then the person, you know, they, they'll go back and check. They'll be like 19%, 22%. So immediately as you're driving off that lot, if you were given a car for $15,000, when you drive off the lot, you're upside down immediately because the interest is calculated daily. Mm -hmm. We're only going to pay what they tell us to pay monthly. We're not going to pay more, which is going to help with the principal and the interest mm -hmm. you know, on the back end and hand side and things like that. So you're upside down. So $15,000. You're gonna be paying back with a twenty-two percent interest. You're gonna pay back double that cost. So you can't you buying two cars versus just that one. It's gonna you're gonna be like that's why I tell people try to get your credit score at least a six forty when you're mm -hmm. trying to go buy a car. Um, some lenders does a five eighty when you're buying a house, mm -hmm. depending on the lender. But a lot of them want six twenty. Okay, but you can't get it at five eighty, but your interest rate gotta be high. Versus a two percent, you're gonna be paying five percent. And on a house, five mm -hmm. percent, that can be thirty thousand dollars more than a person that's paying two percent on the on a house. Right. So that that's a big thing. Interest is a big thing when it comes to making large purchases and credit cards. What's up, world? Welcome to another edition of The Story Behind the CEO. And today we have Latwala. She is one of the credit restoration gurus. She's the owner of AAA Consulting Services. Tell them where to find you. You can find me at on um, Facebook, AAA Consulting Services. I have a private group. I have a business page, Facebook, um, AAA Consulting Services. I also have a website at AAA Consulting Services.net where you can purchase um, credit repair letters, um, e-books from the ground up. Um, starting out, uh, I have one for teenagers um, that's starting fresh with credit repair. And also I just released my business side of the credit um, world e-book to build credit on with business credit. All right, so before we get started, I do have to ask you one question. Heels or tennis shoes? I prefer stilettos. For real? Yeah. I thought you was going to say tennis shoes. Why? Because I feel like you're more tomboyish. And that's why I prefer stilettos because I am in the industry, my, what people would say, nine to five, being an operator. Mm -hmm. I am in steel toe boots all the time. So when mm. I am out and about, I want to look cute and girly for my husband, I guess. Girl, go ahead. Girl, I didn't even see you learn something new every day. Y'all, this is my childhood friend, and I love to see people that we grew up with flourish. She makes me so proud. Um, I actually feel bad sometimes when I ask you stuff, when I inbox you and ask you credit questions, because I know you Never. charge for these services. So I'm like, let me try not to ask her something. Um, but before she sent me an invoice, I'm gonna try not to keep asking <laughs> shit. Let me let me bring it down some. Look at it this way: I I be proud when people that I know and strangers too come to me and, and trust me to give them an answer. And if I don't have the answer, I always go and look for it for them. So, so I do. How you build that trust with everybody? Um, how I started in the beginning was uh, well, I I repaired my own credit about my now about eleven years ago. When I first repaired my credit, mm -hmm. my what made me repair my credit was my husband was like, well, my boyfriend at the time was like, um, he don't want to rent all his life, mm -hmm. so my well, didn't have no credit, so I had to you know find out find the steps and stuff, and then I started digging, I repaired mine, we purchased our first home, and then I started posting things on social media just you know just to get people understanding the process of credit, home, home ownership, and things like that, like people in my age range, really. Mm -hmm. So I, um, after that, I felt that I built, built trust, and one of my ENTs was like, you're giving all the information, you have the information to give, you should start a, a business for that Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And she told me that, like, for what, the longest probably years stretch. Yeah, because I know so, even before you were, had the actual business, you were still giving tips just putting, it just out putting there. stuff out yeah, there yeah i did you know i didn't i didn't want to do it i, I really didn't want to do it for a profit but i was like you know what 
I'm just gonna move towards that way and um I did I did move that way and that's how I feel that I built trust with people because I was putting out information before I started asking for money. charging mm-hmm. and they was getting results. Mm-hmm. So th- that's how I built the, the trust with um I guess my community mm-hmm. and also um those people sent me uh, I guess stories, success stories, uh-huh. and then I put it out there for the rest of the world. Okay. So I guess building that trust that way is how my business has been successful. Yep. So what was um, did did you have to go through anybody? I know you say you you did everything on your own, you researched everything, or did you have somebody helping you along the way, or this was literally YouTube, Google, trial and error? It was all that the. In the beginning, mm-hmm. I went to the first time home by class okay. on um, right in New Orleans. A okay. lady named Miss Lorraine. I don't know if she's still there because I said it was eleven years ago. Right. But the class is still there. Okay. Um, and she told me, you know, she looked at my credit report and she was going down and she was like, um, settle this, pay this, you mm-hmm. know, and things like that. So she know those. She knew those bases would removing things or settling things mm-hmm. and then i had to go in to see how to repair like to build credit so okay. i had to go to um google and youtube has some stuff but now is is way more stuff it's okay just, like it's credit is popular now yeah it wasn't popular when <laughs> 11 I years ago going. yeah so <laughs> that's why i always put the hashtag uh, credit been, been matter before it became popular yeah but um yeah she she helped me um, started, um, you know, down that path, mm-hmm. and then I just, you know, Googled. I took um, two classes along the way, also two big, big classes, just an investment in myself. And you should and knowledge and stuff. So, would you ever stop being a student? Oh, never, because, like I said, I just released my ebook for business, and I I'm learning um, the business side of personal credit, and every day the FC um, the FCA. Um, changes rules and, okay. or update things. Okay. So for the credit um world, basically. So do you when they update things, do you update on your website as well, or for your clients? If um when it comes to the updating part, is like my letters that I put out. So I put out my first ebook with letters. Then when they update something, I'll um I guess refresh my letters and then um release either free, some free letters or release another ebook. Just to keep up to date mm-hmm. and stuff. So to date, how many ebooks do you have? I have three credit repair, personal credit repair ebooks mm-hmm. today, and I have a business credit uh, ebook that I just released. And do you find that um, that's is that your way of maybe teaching people instead of doing it for them? Yes, that is a do-it-yourself credit repair. Now, with my do-it-yourself credit repair ebook, I when you purchase. Of course, I can see who purchased it and days and everything. And I do send them an email saying that um, if they have any questions, they mm-hmm. can still email me, um, you know, to get help along the way. Yeah. So they're not just out there freelancing completely by themselves. You can still ask me something. Right. You invested money. You invested your money with me. So I can give you some time. It's not going to be 24 7, but you know. Yeah, but if you, you have know, a question or my, my emails regularly. So, how everything that you do now was that something that you were taught was credit or money management? Something you were taught growing up, or it was the total opposite? So you don't want that for your kids. It was the total opposite. I had I knew nothing about credit. I was I, I saw you get a paycheck, you blow it. The next one gonna come. Paycheck to paycheck was life within my family. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes. Um, I guess maybe no paycheck, but <laughs> I did not see that growing up. I was not taught growing up. I do say that my, you know, maybe my parents wasn't taught either. Yeah, and stuff. So I do of give course. them that, you know, pass on that. But I didn't want that for my correct three children at all. Well, two children at the time. Of course, I just had another baby um, and stuff. I did not want that for them at all. So if I get myself together. I can be a co-signer for their first home mm-hmm. or for their first car, I mean, first car with a low interest rate. Okay. Don't have to be upside down soon as you drive off the lot and things like that. And I so, think a lot of people even understand what 
upside down is if you gotta explain that because they think that they got a car and that's it. I got a car. Well, I ask a lot of people when um they go purchase cars, well, what's your engine ring look? Like? And they don't the know. Biggest answer and the most answer I get is, I don't know. And that's horrible to not know right. what you have right. to pay back for this car because then the person, you know, they, they'll go back and check. They'll be like 19%, 22%. So immediately as you're driving up that lot, if you were given a car for $15,000, when you drive up the lot, you're upside down immediately because the interest is calculated daily. Mm-hmm. We're only going to pay what they tell us to pay monthly. We're not going to pay more, which is going to help with the principal and the interest mm-hmm. you know, on the back end and hand side and things like that. So you're upside down. So $15,000, you're going to be paying back with a 22% interest. You're going to pay back double that cost. So you're, paying, you're buying two cars versus just that one. It's going to, you're going to be like, that's why I tell people, try to get your credit score at least a 640 mm-hmm. when you're trying to go buy a car. Um, some lenders does a 580 when you're buying a house, mm-hmm. depending on the lender. But a lot of them want 620. Okay. But you can't get it at 580, but your interest rate got to be high. Versus a 2%, you're going to be paying 5%. And on a house, a 5%, mm-hmm. that can be $30,000 more than a person that's paying 2% on the, on a house. Right. So that, that's a big thing. Interest is a big thing when it comes to making large purchases. And credit cards. So do you, with with your clients that you have, do you try to talk them through all, or do you talk them through all of that and counsel them through all of that before they go and make these purchases so they don't have to make those decisions and you have to think going to back and fix it? Yes. When you sign up with Triple A, or before you sign up with Triple A, I expect that I want you and expect that you are at least six months on time payments before you can before I accept you as a client. Okay. Because if you can't pay your bills, you're not gonna pay me for credit repair. So there you have go. to be six months on time payments with credit repair. Some mm-hmm. people do three months, but I say six months. But now the pandemic, if you've been out of work and things like that, okay, I'll I'll push you for the three months. But on a regular before the pandemic, you have six to be months is just showing you more consistency. Yes. And you'll be able to pay me, you know, to repair your credit and you're not in the financial hardship to where you're going to be able to pay your things that you need to pay to, to start getting things um, settled mm-hmm. if that's truly your bill, you know, and things like that, your collections and things like that. But of course, AAA try their best to get everything taken off your credit report. Correct. Right. But as people see, they say, once it's all, it's not no longer your bill. Mm-hmm. That, that doesn't, that's not the truth. Once it's all, you still have to go in and try to settle for at least, for, for the least that you can. Okay. 30, I said my client's 30. When I first started, it was saying 40%, mm-hmm. which is still not, you know, still less than what you owe. But I tell my client to try to settle for 30% or less. Once it come off, but if it didn't come off, I'm challenging as much as I can for at least those so six months. Okay. So um, try to get it taken off your credit because paying a collection, um, it helps, of course, because you don't have an open collection, mm-hmm. but it's much better to get it removed from your credit report. This episode is sponsored by the one and only crownmecollections.com. Kingdom rises and overcomes world negativity to embrace destiny. If that's the brand you can stand behind, then shop with us. www.crownmecollections.com or visit our Instagram page and click the link in the bio at Crimey Collections LLC. Okay, so have you had a client who basically um, the opposite had the money but didn't have the credit? Yes, I did have um, a few clients that way, and I, they have to to a client that have the money that don't have to because they a lot of people is like. I just like to pay cash for things. I don't like right. this. I don't like that. But now it's time for you to go buy a house. But you don't have $300,000 to purchase this home. Mm-hmm. So now you have to build credit. Now you have to go to the banks, your bank or credit union, to get a secure credit card, a secure credit loan. Meaning you're using your money mm-hmm. to build your credit. Mm-hmm. You give the bank $500 and they give you a credit card. Now you have to keep, keep that credit card low 
pay on time, and when I say low, 10% or less, is how you're going to build um, that trust with the bank, showing that you're not maxing out your credit card every mm-hmm. month, and things like that. And also, the credit bureau is going to see that you're doing the same, and you're going to get more points. You're going to earn more points monthly if you're keeping your credit credit um, card down. And also, they have secure credit loans. Give them, again, another $500 on top of the other five. And they'll reissue you a check, or they'll just put it back in your checking account. Okay. So they're giving you the money back and just paying that loan back. And can you do more than 500 or it always has to be 500 It has to be at least $200. All banks, credit unions expect you to do $200, but you can do as much as you choose to, uh, with a secure loan. So what's one of your biggest uh, testimonials with that particular situation? Or just as of lately? My biggest testimonial for the secure credit card? Just credit, just credit just repair, credit being credit. able to help them through their situation and purchase whatever it is that they wanted to purchase, whether it's house, home, I mean, house, car, whatever. Well, I just had a, I guess, a big win with, um, and when my clients text me or tag me and things and say they just bought a home, the credit score went up or bought a car, I'd be proud. But um, as we all probably thought, Kimani Sano, she just purchased a home. Yes. yes. And I call that and over she years, blend. over years. Blender. <laughs> you want a blender? I know that's right. You gonna say the home, the small appliances be lovely on the counter. You gonna get a blender, a microwave, and a toaster. You, there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, purchase some stuff too. That's, you know, my girl, home, hometown girl. Yes. Also. But um, when she, when I woke up and I saw that, I was so proud. You know, proud of her because mm-hmm. it was years. You know, we conversed back and forth. She, she like you say you you come to me asking questions. Mm-hmm. She did the same thing and buys me waited patiently for me to answer things like that, um, and work with me, uh, allow me to work with her mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And um, you know that was a big you know a big moment. Yeah. For her, but also me because she trusted me. Yeah. With my information and things like that, and she just you know just trusted my company and um, also tagged me in it. Which is, I tell my clients, you don't have you to don't tag have to. if you don't want to. That's not going to hurt my feelings. But when they do put it out there and tag, it helps my company gain more trust from other people Correct. also. So because you didn't have the conversation about credit and money in your house, does that now change with your children? Because your older ones are teenagers, right? Yes, yeah, 16 okay. and 14. So. 16? Yes, my daughter is 16. She's so pretty. Let me tell you, wait, yeah. let's talk about how professional her daughter is. My sister went to get her hair done. Not even, she didn't even get it done yet. Mm-hmm. But she contacted her to do her hair. And her response, uh, when she wrote her back, I don't know if it was Instagram or just texting her back. But she was just so professional, like, the whole time. Really? And I was like, if a little girl got to do your hair over these adults that don't respond on social media or they half ass respond to you, I thought, but that's great parenting. That was a uh, that was big for me. I just thought she was so professional and so she's so pretty. Thank you. She is so pretty. Oh my god! Your yeah, son not in front of the camera as much. No, I don't think he, he liked he, that. He's a little shy. Yeah. So um, had his first touchdown of uh, football last week. Congratulations! Yeah. And your baby do not smile for me when I take his pictures. <laughs> Let's just say that the last <laughs> so when we home, when we home. did his back to school pictures, girl, he was looking at me now. For Easter, he was fine. Back to school, I get that. He, I'm like, reestablish the relationship, sir. I don't understand. Is my hair different? What's the problem? He was not happy, but he's so cute. Thank he's, you. And Thank he you. know he the man. That's why he like, I'm not Girl. I'm not doing all of that. He, he, that's definitely the, the rule of that. I was about to say, he run all y'all. Yeah. So that's good for y'all. <laughs> that's good for you. Yeah. What's the conversation, though, in the house around money, credit, and um, what are you teaching them? Because they're about to be adults. Yes. Well, my daughter, um, of course, I she she does my little letters, like the tedious part of my business, like um, stuff in the letters for my um, clients and things like that. Mm-hmm. So we sit and she asked me different things. And she and I, I think she told she told me about a, a situation. Mama, they uh, say something about having too many credit cards is. Um, too, it's too it's bad. It's a bad thing. I say no. It can be a bad thing and it can be a good thing. Having too many credit cards and not being not knowing how to manage those credit mm-hmm. cards, paying them on time, keeping the limits low, 
is a bad thing because your interest rate is going to keep you grinding in debt, mm-hmm. especially when your interest rate is 29% on most credit cards. Capital mm-hmm. One, 26. Um, of course, when you got good credit, such as myself, my credit limit, my interest rates are low on my credit cards, 9%, and you know, mm-hmm. the 7% is the lowest one with Navy Federal. Okay. But I was telling them, you know, credit cards aren't a bad thing, especially like for emergencies and things like that. Mm-hmm. But you want to be able to manage what you're spending. You know, right. pay back what you spend monthly. If you can't, I don't suggest anyone to just pay the minimum because, like I said, you're going to drown in debt. You're going to, it's going to, you know, add up every month. And if you only can afford the minimum, that's all you're going to pay. Right. The minimum every month. And you're going to drown more and more. But um, I told her, you know, some people, it's a good thing. Some people, it is, it's not. But for you and your brother, um, as y'all, you know, she know I have a, have them on all of my credit cards as authorized users. Okay. When you guys become adults, you're going to, um, I asked her how much you're going to spend on your credit cards and things. She was like, well, you told me 10%. I was like, well, she heard me say 10% to one of my clients. So she'd be ear hustling. Yeah. And that's a good like thing that. though. And, um, that's what y'all she told her, to be ear hustling. She told her brother, when it comes to money management, they're not good. Of course, they're kids. They, yeah. they want to buy whatever, yeah. buy shoes and this and that kind of stuff. So I got them a, um, a debit card with Chase. Chase has these new debit, new debit card accounts with kids that you can um, pay them for chores. And inside the app, it breaks it down. Mm-hmm. Earnings, chores, and things like that. And you can move the money around how you want, want okay. it to. So um, with her, she want more. <laughs> Um, she's 16 now, so I'll, I'm allowing her to do makeup, home makeup and stuff. So she, she still, I had to make her understand. Okay, so what do you have in your bank account? Okay, you can go, you can go buy your makeup. And she was like, "Wow, I don't have enough. This, um, you know, the taxes." It's like, well, you can't pay it. You can't buy it. You got to take something out that court and make it, make it work. She thought she was giving it to him. Oops. <laughs> make it work, or you gonna wait till next week and get your allowance? And she was like. Really? So she was really surprised that mom is saying, no, I just told y'all firmly last month that this is kicking in. Yeah. A, allowance for chores. And she said immediately at that time when she said, when I told her $20 a week for allowance. She said, mom, no, I don't know. How much we get more <laughs> without our allowance? <laughs> when you just buy our stuff. Mm-hmm. So but, is that, it, it, that, that haven't registered yet with mm-hmm. the credit side. I talked to them. Um, I try to talk to them regularly. My son, he don't he he don't really care right now. I guess yeah. he just yeah. want the V bucks stuff, you know, and all that. Girl, and, that's all they care uh, about. Uh, and he he uh just ran into that too. The the taxes for PlayStation. Mm-hmm. He need five more dollars for taxes. Yes, you, you ain't getting it. I guess you be buying that PlayStation no, next week. So wait, how old is he? He's fourteen. Okay, so give him a couple of years. He might, you know. But then that's what my husband said. Uh, he was like, um. That, that, that boy not worried about that right now. Yeah. He's not even worried about girls at the moment. So mm-hmm. maybe I hope that don't kick in. No nonsense. No. But, no. Uh, but uh, with my daughter, it's because she... She's older. She listens. Me, yeah, she, she's older and she is hustling. Right? So I should say, which is a good thing. Mm-hmm. But what else she's doing, son? Because um, <laughs> she is hustling. And I um, I did tell her, I said, and tell your friends when the, when the people come around... About credit cards and this and that. Don't be signing on no credit cards and stuff. She was right. like, oh, "Okay, yeah, I'll, um, you know, I'll let them know." But um, you know, just the conversation right now. It's not too in depth because they're still young. Mm-hmm. But I do plan on, I guess, sitting them down because I have a book for, like I said, teenagers. teenagers. Like yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna go over that book and go through the book once they once she got become a senior. I said. Um, which will be next year. Damn. But, um, she, I know that. We old. I, <laughs> I just told my husband, just the boy, that's like, uh, um, I just feel, like, yeah, uh, they, my they knees, up just quick. everything, yes, oh, kids is growing up too quick. But, so, so yeah, yeah that's you want to do more ebooks? You want to have, yeah, because like, like you said, am I, am I ever going to not be a student? I'm always going to be a student, especially in this um, industry for mm-hmm. credit, because it's always going to evolve. And as my kids get older, I want to always be up on the laws, because mm-hmm. um, they have a lot of laws when it comes to credit repair and things like that. So I want to always know. 
um, firsthand to tell, what to tell my clients, mm-hmm. what to tell my kids when mm-hmm. they get older and become adults, right? And um, things like that. Whether you become a client or not, I right. you know I want to know the correct answer to give you when you ask me that question. So, being that again, the conversation wasn't had early on. Do you find yourself teaching your parents? My dad, yeah, my dad. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do. Um, you feel like you're he, has, he has come to me and asked me um, credit credit um, questions or uh, let me look at um, his wife's credit report, go over it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I do um, find myself teaching my parents, mm-hmm. my, my dad, and also my, my, my aunties. How you feel about that? Questions. Um, like I said, it's not their fault that they didn't know about credit repair, but it wasn't my fault that I ain't know younger neither, but I did take it upon myself to learn. But this man that was introduced in my life forced me to want more. Mm-hmm. Forced me to want, you know, credit my credit fix of uh, purchasing a home and things like that. So, um, you know, I don't blame them and you know I think they, they were like only they is. only taught us, I guess, at the time what they knew. Right, yeah. Because exactly. I, I feel like what just a lot of different things, um, I come across as I'm as I get older, I'm like, my parents should take care of this. My parents should take care of this. Right. This is something I'm dealing with in my thirties, my parents should. But then I gotta take it back and like, okay, they only they only taught us what they knew. Exactly. So, um, so your daughter helps you, is she starting her own business? I know she was well, I know she was like doing my sister hair, so is that her business that she's doing? Or is she, she just kinda every once in a while, I don't really wanna fool with the job thing. Yeah. And that's how it is. Um, when she first started, she hit the ground running and stuff, and she just saw, like, she didn't have it um, together always, meaning schedule this person and then try to take a break for a few hours, uh, an hour, just schedule Or just one a day. And bad, too. She just didn't have that scheduling part down, and she just overwhelmed herself, looking at the money, as a kid who would be a uh, 15 year old at the time. Mm-hmm. So, um, she stepped back from it for, for a little while and stuff. And that's and, okay. Right. And I, to, and I told her that. I say, um, may, maybe you're not going to be interested now. When you go to college, mm-hmm. you know, you have that little skill. Um, you're going to be in the dorms. You can do hair for a little extra money mm-hmm. or whatever if you want to. You, you just know that you have that talent yeah. that you can use as you go to school or whatever you choose to, uh, mm-hmm. to major in and stuff. And she was like, yeah, you're right. And um, I was like, and another thing, you in this cooking class. You right. come home and cook a lot now. I say, you can be cooking at, at school too. A little, little money on the side and things yeah. like that. You know? I mean, but, she's, it is great because she's very well versed. So she knows how to do hair. She knows how to cook. You know, and she's being taught about money management. I think she's going to be ahead of her class. Yes, and that's what I want my kids to always. I want them to be ahead of. Their class on in everything in life with school and what I need to be teaching them at home because of course the school should have a credit course, a life skill course, Man. or something in in school when you get to what junior, yeah, so definitely senior level. Yeah. level they should have a a life skill um, yeah. class. So something like that need to be placed in school eventually. But until they do, but even when they do, because I live be my last job. I still sure. want him to be groomed enough to know, don't go on these college campuses signing for no credit cards. When yeah. You got eight credit cards in your name already. Yeah. And things like that. But because I'm going to control them credit cards because inside the Navy Federal app, I can say you can spend a thousand dollars a month yeah. on books, this, this, and that. You know, your kid may be like, oh, she ain't going to know about this credit card I'm going to sign for. Mm-hmm. Now you're screwing up your credit. Right. You're trying, what? Well, they should be able to get high credit limit because they're going to be rolling up a mine, thank God. Mm. But still, my daughter's friend, I want her to let them know, you know, don't sign for the credit card if you don't need it. But some people do. We all need them. Yeah. Know? So just teach them how, how to manage it. Pay it back every month. Mm-hmm. Don't use too much that you're not going to be able to afford and things like that. So hopefully I can instill that in my children to wear their circle of friends. They can, um, you know, be able to influence them. Yeah, catch yeah. Them it, yeah, influence them with not, no, that's enough thing for down the, down the line. Absolutely. You show, um, at least going to be your last kid? Yes. 
He should have our last video. <laughs> so, <laughs> what uh, what obstacles did you have to overcome to get where you are? Like, or was everything just smooth sailing? No, going through that. the process to get here. To get the credit repair? To or get just... to this level of success at all. That oh. way, you, where you are. Oh, yeah, it was definitely obstacles. I um gave up a lot of times, of course. And uh, I'm just thankful that I, I didn't remain in that spot of uh, doubt or mm -hmm. that I'm never going get, to get to where I want to be at. But um, owning my own business and also becoming that operator that I wanted to be in life. Mm -hmm. Just um, I, before I became, before I became an operator, I was doing um, turnarounds in the plant, working mm -hmm. for contract positions and that kind of stuff. Um, one day I was sitting in my car going into work at another plant, um, on the turnaround and I just saw my, I was just crying and I was like, I'm tired of, you know, chasing turnarounds, not being able to be stable enough to where I have a job that's security, job security mm -hmm. that I do now. And, um, unfortunately I had got into a car accident, mm -hmm. but come to the Lord kept me here after that bad accident uh -huh. and also put me in a position to where I can go to school full time because I prayed to go to school full time Okay. for PTAC. Mm. And that prayer got answered by a car accident that put me out of work for four years. Shit. That's why I used to say, I'm a firm believer in praying detail. The Lord you asked for it, but, but you had to get flipped upside way. down for it. So wow. I went to school, was able to finish school that whole two years, go straight through, graduated with honors mm -hmm. and everything. And I landed a job where I'm working at now um, as an operator. And like I told you, my auntie just kept on telling me, start your business, you know, this and that. So my job as an operator helped me financially um, get to this point where my mm -hmm. business was. Financially, I was able to just use my money Okay. And move towards um, investing in my business, which is taking classes, um, learning more from mm -hmm. mentors, um, building ebooks with a mentor, and things like that, and all that. Um, so the obstacles was definitely there. They um, they did get me down every now and then. I can't say my husband. Uh, he was a true. He okay. did help help me. No, you know we're gonna get through this. He. Was like I said, I was out at work for four years. I couponed a little bit, but yeah. I mean, not really, not a lot. I inboxed you about that yeah. a lot. We, yeah. <laughs> I coupon a lot to where I can help him pay to pay some bills too, yeah. instead of having everything on my own and stuff like yep. that. So, um, you know, with all of that, just coming from where I'm from and not being taught a lot about life, um, still seeing a lot, I guess that I left from still mm -hmm. remain the same way. And Not growing, and, no change, no growth. Yeah. Right. And I'm just happy that I was the one who, I guess, was able to get up and flourish mm -hmm. from, from the area and still want to see my- a Absolutely. All, anybody still, you know, it's never too late. No. To say, let's let's go ahead and um, do, do something. And you don't know how much of an inspiration you probably are right. to the next person. A lot of people do inbox me a lot about that. Uh, uh, thank you for, what, you know, I'll be posting up inspirational messages, mm -hmm. just putting it out there, how, you know, how, how where I came from. I'm, I'm never going to forget where I came from. Of right. course, I'm, I don't want to go back. So Correct. I'm never going to forget. And that's why I work my tail off to get where I'm at. The obstacles was definitely there. Just sitting back, watching individuals, and thinking to myself, when I do get to the, when I did get to the level, people thinking, he thinks she's all right. You are so what? And I, I, I this, I just told my cousins that yesterday. I, I am like, I am so like, 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 that's why. Uh, uh, but that's because you think I'm all, you think it, I'm all that. That's what it really is. You say, you just say that's how you really like feel. That. That's how you exactly. So I'm like, I, I am all that. Yeah. I mean, my kids is all that. I mean, 
Because if you don't is. think it, then I mean, who's going? You to? think of me what I think of me, so don't even. I don't like when people Thank even you. do that. But this is my thing with you. How the hell did you become so disciplined? Because you was a badass child. Like you Girl, suspensions. Yeah. Didn't you get expelled? Yes. Expelled yourself. So how the fuck did you go to Nova Academy? <laughs> yes, like, yeah, so how did you even flip that? Because it's like a whole different person. I mean, oh. I know we grow up, but. And I'm not even going to say my kids immediately made me grow up because, mm-hmm. as you know, I had my son and my cousin Katrina stepped in and helped me with him and stuff. And uh, so it was like, I, I don't even, I can't even tell you what made me want to say okay enough is enough stop clicking out yeah yeah i know i didn't want to be away from my kids which is jill if i keep you know just reacting to er any and everything that somebody does and stuff like that my husband played a big part of my attitude too he's very calm and he's able i'm a firecracker so y'all balance each other out Mm -hmm. very much so so um and also i didn't want to be embarrassing my dad out there and stuff doing it because he was a preacher and all that. Yeah. Like that. Not just a preacher, just my dad. I just, wanna make him proud. Yeah. And uh and I have and he have he he, he talk about me. Oh he, a lot. he let it be known. Yeah. He definitely <laughs> let it be known. And I'm proud of that. Yeah. And I'm thirty five years old, I still don't wanna embarrass my dad. Yeah, I don't know. Like and my yeah, husband said the know. same thing to the kids and everything. He's like, Y'all don't wanna do nothing to embarrass y'all mom. Yeah, you know he's forty three and he say the same thing. He don't want to do anything to yeah. matter. I always talk about your, your yeah, representation stuff. of me when you go out there looking like that or acting like that or exactly. doing all that foolishness. So just the example you say, your sister contacted my daughter and how professional she was. Absolutely, I didn't, I didn't tell her how to be professional when it came to um booking the hair and style. Mm-hmm. What I told her was, I need to know what adults you're booking because some of these adults are envious of your parents. Mm-hmm. And I don't need them in my house. I don't need that energy around here. And I don't need you at their house. Right. So that was how my conversation with my daughter when she started getting into hair. Mm-hmm. And people inboxing out. Every adult had to come through me. Right. And most kids had to come through me because you don't know if they send their child to do things at my house. You know, people just dirty. Yeah. Stuff. I have a husband, I have a son. I don't want no little girl going and saying nothing that happened at my Absolutely. house. Absolutely. didn't happen at my house. So that was the conversation. I have my daughter about her hair business. Nobody can come here that I don't want to do Period. It's just your money. I mean, you don't need that money. It's not like you need the money. So yeah. But uh, but I'm I'm, I'm very proud of you. Like I I, you. I think I'm gonna say that a million times. I'm extremely proud of you. Thank you. I I love to see you know people um that we grew up with. And Ronald was just here the other day. So yeah, yeah. Me, that's my show. See, <laughs> I told him I said um. If your chef don't have a Chick Fil A line outside of his house, what? they ain't doing it right. <laughs> I, 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 I was like, who the hell recorded this video? All the con- I called around. I said, baby, I'm not coming to get that food today. <laughs> I got it. I'm driving all the way from the West Bank. And you want me? This a damn cool, cool line. I get you. I'm gonna catch it the next time. I'm gonna catch you next week. I said, well, he was only making baked potatoes time. that week. That's all the time. I asked. Yeah, I think yeah. by me not living over there, I don't know. So when I'm like, when whoever posted the video, I'm like, this is fucking Chick Fil A line. And and I'm telling you, every time you cook, anytime you make treats and stuff, his line is long like that. Yeah, I'm just having to catch that one day, but it's always right. long like that. I'm I'm very proud of everybody, you know, stepping out. Me too. Stepping I really out, am. doing that thing. I think that's a. I just coming from I I I mean our little small area, yeah, you that's know. What I be saying. It ain't it was like it was just us. It ain't much that was there, but you know. Everybody really finding their own way. Yes. Just something as simple as Miranda, you know, doing the makeup and stuff, which I didn't know that Miranda was doing your makeup this morning. <laughs> I said, I told her oh, when I booked, I said, I'm going, I'm doing a podcast. Can you do me? Uh, she was like, Yes, yeah, 7 7 30 at 8. I said, 7 30, just so we can get it over with, that, mm-hmm. and I can just be, you know, come make sure I'm here on time and stuff. So, well, yeah, she, uh, that's my little makeup person. Yeah. yeah. Just, Trying to keep it in the community. Keep it in the community. Girl. Definitely yeah. keep it in the community. Definitely yeah. keep it down. Down here. Huh? She would have got it down here. Yeah, uh, that's, that's what, what Miranda said. Yeah, that's what she said. I said, so now if I do anybody from home, I'm going to ask them, baby, who's your makeup artist for the day? Because you, <laughs> you might as well just come up here. Yeah. And, um, But also, I'm going to have her come back so um she can actually be on the show, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I definitely want all of us to, you know, have the, the, so the exposure. She's so cute. Yeah. 
she she's just the nicest little person. She, she, she her voice don't go over her fine. I, I I always ima- want to imagine her screaming like at the kids. She like, said she be getting mad when I said she be cooking out. I said, oh, who? How you don't be oh, cooking out on nobody? She's They're the sweetest person. That little voice, girl. So what would um uh, what would you say? If to inspire another person that wanted to get into your industry, what tips or what advice would you give to them if they were looking to do what you're doing? And whether it's my industry or entrepreneurship, um, mm-hmm. or just trying to get a career, because like I said, I do both. I have a career and I have my business mm-hmm. that's um, you know a success, and I pray that it's keep uh, flourishing as it as the years come. Mm-hmm. But um, a tip uh, would be to not latch on to someone who's more successful, but get around people who want more. Yeah. Don't be around someone who's going to be like, yeah, they keep oh, no, that's, gonna, that, that's hard. That's going to be hard. Oh, no, I don't think you should do that. Oh, no, I don't think that's a good business. Mm-hmm. Or a person, every time you post something or say something, it's going to be saying, like you just said, uh, you bragging. Or you, you know, because anytime I post something about a success or something I'm happy about, or just happy in my marriage or mm-hmm. anything, I get an inbox from somebody. Because the, a person that's underneath that post is talking about you or saying this, this, and that. I don't care. So I just block that person. Ooh, the messenger, basically, mm-hmm. because if that person was comfortable to talk to you, what are you saying? So, my, um, I guess my inspiration, my message would be to get your, a mentor, like on social media, you know, Instagram, follow pages that, what you want to do. If you want to do credit repair, I follow the hashtags, I follow other credit repair companies, Mm -hmm. I follow, you know, business um, companies and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mentors, somebody that's, I guess, doing better than you, Mm -hmm. yeah, doing better than you are, and not going to be jealous as if you catch up with them. Mm -hmm. Or leave them, not leave them behind, but go take your own lane. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. just able to now. Okay, thank you. I, I got it. Somebody like that, mm-hmm. and I did have a mentor like that who was like, "That's that's you know, she was proud that she was able to coach me up and basically let me go on my own and stuff." But she also told me never, um, never stop being a student. Mm-hmm. That was her main, yes. main, yes message to me that's whatever you do never stop being a student never stop trying to better yourself within that industry yep. doing the next the next thing to try to stand out from um the other people within your industry so um that's that, that's one of the big things i had to do i had to i guess reevaluate my circle mm-hmm. and stuff. absolutely did you can have best friends when you're young you can have best friends from school. You can have best friends as an adult. Reevaluate your circle, and the minute you tell somebody something, and they roll their eyes or they get disinterested, cut them off because they they're not trying to see you uh, nowhere but behind them. Oh, oh, where we started at? Oh, where we started at? You from here? You can't you can't possibly be doing better than me at all. Yeah, that's that mindset right there. Yeah, like how? Yeah, see with that how stuff. That pisses me off because <laughs> I was in school at Nunez for feedback and I earned six scholarships. It was Dow Chemical, Shell um, for P-Tech, Shell um, Chemical for P-Tech, mm-hmm. and um, four from Nunez for Dean List, um, Academic, and two other ones. Uh, I'm not trying to say they little, but there was there was a leak one, so I really don't really remember. Mm-hmm. Two months, but it's six scholarships and. One of my professors, he said, how, how did I get the Shell Scholarship? I said, cuz, aren't your ass um, preparing me for that? <laughs> Wasn't you preparing me for that? <laughs> That's how. And I step off. And I just walked away from him because you pissed me off when you asked me how. Don't come yeah. to my face ask me how when you see me in class every day doing my work. Busting my Coming ass. on time. I'm a mom, a wife. I got to go home. Um... Sometimes I'll be out couponing all day. Yep. 
<laughs> go home, try to make sure they still have something to eat and come to class on time and make my best grades and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's like, why would y'all ask that how question? I, right. I don't like that how question from um, a person that's supposed to be leading me to, mm-hmm. to be great. Stuff. Instead so, of saying congratulations. Exactly. Yes. He did not say congratulations on that one time. But I didn't give him a chance after I clicked out on <laughs> But uh um, yeah, that how question, whether it's coming from home our hometown mm-hmm. or whoever. I don't like the how question. Yeah. Because you could do the same thing that I'm doing. We all get the same Unless it's a how problems. because I want you to teach me. Yeah, now, it's is this a how it's because a, well, yeah. how you did that because I'm trying to do that. Exactly. Not how you did that because uh, yeah. It's all about how you ask a, a question, how yeah. you say it. And he said the how is, and I can't believe this. I can't believe this. <laughs> Pause it. I believe it more. <laughs> Coming on the show for, you know, I know you say you was a little nervous, we were both a little nervous and stuff, yeah. but I want to thank you. And, you know, I pray that your business keeps being way more successful and that you don't have to do the operate, you have to do nothing. But you just sit back and let everything run. And then you can be full time at home with Ali. Because yep. you got a long way to go. <laughs> since you won't wait 15 years and go have another baby. That's my husband. <laughs> since you won't wait 15 years. But I'm very proud of you again. Um, and I appreciate you for coming. Like, I mean, that's that's and I, all uh, I can I appreciate say. Is you congratulations. For, and, yeah. For choosing me to come on, your own, come, come on here and, and express myself and share my story. And um put my company out here yes and uh i'm proud of you too girl, girl. we we doing a damn thing you fucking right so yeah. make sure y'all buy every last ebook one for your child and what one is personal credit one is business credit business credit is business personal is personal the purpose of business credit is to not have a pg on your personal side meaning adding more debt to your debt to income ratio whether you're trying to buy a house and things like that your business credit and personal should be separate until you get to the point of getting American Express cards and um, getting a vehicle in your business name. Most of the time, the vehicles, you don't have to PG. So it's, 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 it's all in my ebook, and we all, you know, trying to get somewhere in life, I guess. Mm-hmm. And on the business side, I, I, can, I can help lead you that. <laughs> no, I'm slow, but yeah, it's three books and I, I mean four books, and one is detailed and tailored to our teenagers that mm-hmm. don't have that in they, I guess they they life as I did, mm-hmm. and hopefully, I, I want to do a class for teenagers. Yeah, and I want to do another class for um like people our age. Yeah, you know, just just a just wide variety right. of yeah. um age groups. So it's, but it's gonna be separate because now the teenagers will be by themselves, right? Um, because you know they're teenagers; they may not be paying attention as much as you and I were yeah. really learning. Mm-hmm. But you know, just putting it out there and letting them know, hear about credit for the first time, if it's always if it's on the first time, correct? And it's break the be a generational curses. That generational curse, absolutely, absolutely, yes. We breaking them. We yeah. breaking them. Yeah. All of us. We, have we broke them, baby. Yeah, we broke them. We have broke them. Bro- bro- yeah, and I want my kids to do better. Better meaning y'all don't have to get out here and do what I had to do to get where I'm at. Y'all already have that put that push through. Yeah, to do better and be in a better place. So, absolutely. I want y'all to have y'all children as I have kids to be in a better position than you. Are. Yep. So my generation after me, I want them to be. Um, better. Everybody should be better in mm-hmm. their generation. My children, my grandchildren, great grandchildren, and everything else. Yep. So, um, hopefully, when you come back on the show, uh, you'll have all your classes and stuff started. So that way, you know, we'll be able to put that out there. Yeah, and, and people be, on and that. make sure they're virtual too, so you can reach more people. And that, and it will be virtual and um, in in class. Mm-hmm. I am working on getting with some of the. I guess the community people, mm-hmm. individuals that uh, really want to see um, us do well and yeah. things like that. So because the teenage class, of course, I want that one to be free. Yeah. Okay. Because they're kids. Yeah. But I still want them to hear it for the first time, see it, and things like that. So I want their class to be free. 
even if I have to pay for the venue myself, I still want oh, them to be free. And also, also, yeah. So that's another thing I I, I am gonna start trying to work on and stuff. Mm-hmm. Me asking for help, it's not always the easy thing. It's not, but she, but yeah, you I'm have to get over it. it. Yeah, we you helping you helping your community, you helping my child, this child, this child. So why we can't sponsor X amount of dollars? Right. You know, for the people who can do it, you know, and for the people who can't understood. But for the ones that can, it's it's enough of us that can help give a couple of dollars to get everything rolling, even if it's something as simple as making sure they have something to eat so they have lunch and drinks and stuff like that, snacks, whatever. Yeah. You know, just make sure you just reach out to other business owners, reach out to myself when you're ready to do it. And sure we'll, will. you know, make sure we put a, a good team together to get the funds available, yeah. you know, to do it. So you're not coming out of pocket. I think that, you know, asking for help shouldn't be a, a scary thing. You know, mm-hmm. it, it shouldn't. You, yeah, you are basically a goddamn community leader. Like, they should be ready to give you the money. And that's when you ask, um, how did I overcome being a, a bad child and this and that? That's another thing. People just looking at me and I do have people who I guess follow me or um, what's the word? Just people that look look at me and be like, oh yeah, she really did it. Coming from our my, my hometown, yeah, she she did it. I can do it. Whether it's the envy she did it, or mm-hmm. I know I can do it. Or uh, inspirational, yeah. When she was that damn, she really got out. You know, got out and you know wanted more and this and that. Mm-hmm. So that was another thing that made me want to do better and stay doing better. Yeah. Um, those reasons, the mm-hmm. people, you know, the little kids, whether it's adults or whoever, mm-hmm. just don't want that to be on, that the, the intake of me, of a negative person. Yeah. And things like that. Yeah. Which people still going to have that. And that's okay. They, and they're going to, they're not going to grow either. They're yeah, going to continue exactly. to say, in that same space where they are and then everybody else is going to surpass them so negative people will be with the negative people and the like-minded individuals will be with each other so we're not even worried about that don't even worry about that so thank you again and thank y'all for for tuning in yes ma'am to another edition of the story behind the ceo